All right, Kev, we are recording. Sucks we weren't able to do this live, but yeah. um, nevertheless, uh, here we are. So, Kev, uh, a lot to cover, man. Um, and um, I'm sure that you um, had some time to kind of decompress and think about what happened and the way that things kind of came across. Uh, from what I saw in my DMs, um, seems like the consensus is that everyone's kind of stuck on the fact that you said that High Point is a scam, which is a big big uh big comment statement, big yeah. statement can can you elaborate on that because that i was not expecting to hear that yeah like you know like hindsight 2020 probably shouldn't have hopped on the call with him because i literally just sat there and he just yelled the whole time and i was just like like there, like there was like i think midway through you can see my face and i just i was like okay why am i just sitting here getting yelled at for like a, an hour and a half right because i was like okay well i thought he wanted to talk I guess not I guess mm -hmm. he wanted to have me on. And I just literally just sat there like, okay, I just got yelled at for like an hour and a half. This is kind of boring, right? And like, I, I think, um, he, like at one point he got pretty mad that I was so calm and he was like, are you a sociopath? And I'm just like, I was getting confused because I thought this was pretty simple to understand, but I guess like people don't understand it. And, you know, like I tried to touch on everything, but like, I guess we'll start from what you just said, the scam part, like, yeah, it's the reason we ended the protocol. You know, we right after launch, I kept looking at our tokenomics and I just kept looking at the way the protocol was ran. Like right in the beginning, I was like, oh man, yo, I love Joey. I love this team. This is this is crazy what we're building. Super hype community, super big community. I got to know like, I think almost every single one of the people that were active every day. And then as the protocol ran on, because like uh, we said it before, but it only lasted like three weeks, you know? If that, yeah. Yeah, and I sat there and I was just like, I think the second weekend, like it, it dawned on me while I was like, holy shit, yo, this like rebase protocols are kind of a scam. Like I remember vividly thinking and sitting there like, oh, fuck. And then a week later, we ended the protocol because of that reason. Like I remember Joey hit this point too. We were just like, yo, this is not good at all. Because initially it sounded great, right? You hold a certain amount. Um, I even helped build the smart contract with... Um, all the deployment, all the testing, and then a lot of uh, going back and forth with the Titano smart contract and then with the um, other force on Phantom as well, you know? And so okay. like, it's not like I went into the project being like, I'm gonna build a scam, fuck everybody, you know? Okay, like, so that's, yeah. okay, but keep that, keep in mind that that's a little different than what, <clears throat> and again, yeah, no, I, 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 guess I, I didn't it. watch the whole thing. I, I watched yeah. the first few minutes. Um, you know, things are going to get taken out of context. So you say the word scam, I mean, th that's a big word, the word scam, right? Um, for anything. So if you feel that rebase protocols are a scam and that's your position now, now, I guess I should have said that statement itself, right? Rather than uh, high point was a scam. I, I meant to like all of it entirely. And like, you know, if, if you ever hop on an AME with me or like with anybody I talk to, like, I think I'm, I think I'm pretty open about why high point ended, you know, it was, like I think the day I ended, I even told you I'm like, oh man, like I'm so glad this protocol's over. Like this wasn't good at all. Like I remember, because if you take it from another point of view, Treasury was building taxes, uh, RFV was building taxes. We didn't have to end the protocol. People just kept, just people just would have kept losing money. Because it but, wouldn't that be? Because to me, if 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 a protocol keeps going just so that they can keep making money, yeah. knowing that it, the price action keeps going down. To me, yeah. that's like more of a scam. That's actually a scam. Yeah. Now, as like, far as yeah. far as stating, okay, all rebase protocols are scams. That's where it gets a little nuanced. I don't know. You yeah. can coach me. You can yeah. coach us. When I mean us, the viewers, because what, for example, some people are saying like on chain was saying that Kyoto protocol is a scam. I totally disagree. He's saying, yeah. well, it started as a rebase protocol. It's a scam. And in my opinion, well, there's still more to happen. They're not going to be a rebase protocol forever. They're going to go on their own blockchain, blah, 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 blah. So, but I know that from watching on chain, watching Oliver, he feels any project that started out as a rebase protocol is a scam. Yeah. Would you, now that you've actually run a rebase protocol, what yeah. on nuances like that, what are your thoughts? I feel like his, his, his choice for words is a little bit strong. Like, like for example when he was uh what, what was the exact example where i was like oh i'm kind of confused he was saying um fuck i can't remember i just drew a blank but specifically for rebase protocols the part to me that realized it was a scam was so the way it works is you could go and i say this all the time you hear me say it, like verbatim 
the smart contract, you could go and fork one and you could deploy it, right? You could then hold your tokens for a year and tell me how many tokens you have. But that doesn't exactly equal to money. You know what I mean? You could have a million Kevin tokens, yeah. but it doesn't equal dollars. Mm -hmm. Where the dollars come from is by telling people to buy and sell and actually trade it. So that's when Joey and I hit the point of like, yo, this is like the biggest scam ever because how can we be telling people, oh, you need to hold the token and then realize that all the money comes from people buying and selling it, which is the exact opposite, you know? Wait, hold on. So let's backtrack. So yeah. And again, this was five months ago. So yeah. is this when you guys decided, hey, we better come up with revenue streams? And that's when the talk about the launch pad and the deck. Yeah, and right. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. So you remember like all the ideas that we had where we were just like, oh, fuck. Like even in the first AMA we had, I said that we needed to migrate to a lower APY and to a model that wasn't traded and taxed this way. Because to me, that's when I realized, oh, this is like the biggest scam ever. It's OK. We deploy the contract. It's been going great tokens doing fine. And then I realized that we actually need trading volume to support people's uh, idea of I need to hold, which is the complete opposite. And that's when I was like, okay, this whole thing is fucked. You know, this whole thing was, I was like, okay, we literally built a community for like six months telling people if you hold, you'll have X amount of money. Okay, you know? Kevin, hold on. Let, let yeah. me stop you there. Cause yeah, I, yeah. I want to take our time and be detailed. So yeah. All right, so let, back to that point, because mm -hmm. I know that a lot of the conversations that happen, and at that point in time, I was very new to DeFi, so I, yeah. I still don't understand all of it. A lot of people thought it was weird that after such a short amount of time, you guys were already hurting. And I didn't. we didn't have a lot of points of reference. We had Titan, yeah. Titano as a point of reference. Yeah. Okay? We had, but we also had, and so before you say, well, they have a, they had, you know, a lot of funds and a big liquidity pool. We yeah. also had reference points that were much smaller than you guys. We had Uranus, Poseidon. Yeah. We had some small players that were still around, still making things happen. So can you yeah. maybe provide some detail that maybe you have, have done it? I just didn't hear it. Can you provide yeah. some detail for the viewers of why you guys became, you got, why you guys were in such a bad spot so quickly? So it didn't help that Avalanche itself was an asset that was, so one of the biggest things was, um, so th this goes back to the smart contract, right? It was immutable. So one of the biggest things for the rebase bot is you need it to trigger every single trade. And so how the rebase works is on a wallet to wallet transfer, it'll rebase. And one of the things that we looked at was, okay, can we build one into it? No, we couldn't. So we literally weren't rebasing because how it would work is I would ne literally need to transfer one token to another wallet. That's how the rebasing model works. So mm -hmm. on top of us not having that bot set up because the contract was immutable, that that paired to we were telling everybody to hold, AVAX was going down, and then the rebases themselves, it was like the fastest way to die. Like absolute mm -hmm. fastest way to die. Because right after launch, it dumped really hard because the rebase bot wasn't going and people were like, oh, we aren't rebasing. And even we were like, okay, you know what? We need to set up the bot using an external address and like it's all in the announcements it took us two weeks to build that just because like for example titano has the bot built into their smart contract we didn't that's that, that's like a like a huge factor that made the protocol end and then along with that like there were just a bunch of issues where even the rebasing amount um you would think that so th this was one of the things that i brought up but you, i don't think you remember this but to burn tokens okay means Technically, you would increase the uh, value of a token, right? When you burn a certain amount, you're then de decreasing how much is in circulation. Therefore, it's the amount that it, it, yeah, it it's not should go up. Make, yeah. But it's that not didn't happen. Okay. And the way rebases work, like the APY, is purely based on the initial circulating supply. So when we burn tokens, it then messes up the amount per rebase. Pair that, pairing that, so, so people weren't getting the correct rebases because we burnt tokens and you would think, oh, you burn tokens to raise everyone's value, right? You can, you can, if you can afford to burn tokens and raise everyone's value, why not, right? So we did that because we could actually afford to. And then we find out the rebasing is off because the token supply directly correlates to the rebasing amount. And we thought, who the hell designed this? Because it should not be written this way, right? Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, like I said, everyone was holding, pairing that with the rebase bot not being set up. Yeah, it, it was like the fastest way to tank. But even after, we built all that and then everything was good and high point was moving up again 
there was at one point where it stopped moving. And that's because everybody who was holding tokens was purely just holding tokens. They were not buying, selling, and trading it like we needed them to. Because that's that's realistically how it works. You need people to buy, sell, and trade so that there's money that's mm -hmm. distributed because of the taxes to each of the wallets. But if people weren't selling enough, why was the price action so so bad on it? That doesn't because whenever sense. AVAX went down, so did so. It, so we paired to AVAX for some reason. AVAX was a dying asset. I'm not sure why. Because of AVAX, it, that, that, I know I know that was an issue, right? And yeah. we talked about it in the Omniverse interview yeah. where, where I said it's so good to see that Omniverse is, is going to be paired to something more stable, right? I think it's BUSD. Yeah. Um, so it it took that it it destroyed your price that much. Yeah, literally. What if the token pair that you were paired to? goes down so so does your token card no i know that but yeah. that much that that had to do yeah with that yeah that much it was literally very few defining features that that made it go down and we were, we were just mind blown because we thought okay we need a way to incentivize people buying because that's the only way it could go up even though so it, it was kind of like an inverse idea where people would be like okay if i just hold then i get more money but that's not true because if you hold all the money goes down because your value goes down mm -hmm. and you know, it was only two weeks in and we were like, oh, my God, we need to come up with external revenue streams immediately to bring up the price. OK, so it was, yeah, I yeah, mean, that's I, funny. I, yeah. OK, so I do remember that. I remember the launch pad, the decks, all that stuff. And then I do remember I think there was there and I hope I'm not misremembering. Was there was there infighting between the team or you guys didn't agree on next steps or am I thinking of a different project? Yeah, it was just like the project direction because I realized that we needed external revenue streams, but like we had this vision where we wanted to build the time vault. Like we didn't know it was called the time vault now, like how it's built now. But back then, that's when we that what we wanted to build to yeah, add on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it okay. never came because we were so focused on okay, how can we make people buy this token? Okay, Even so though, yeah, and where I'm going with this, Kevin, I am yeah. going somewhere with this. So. Because at the end, a lot of the you know whispers or things that people said yeah. were, well, there was issues. There may have been something nefarious going on um, that n n we don't know about. A lot of people would ask me because of the fact that I was I was doing um, yeah. the marketing. Can you elaborate on whether or not any of that was true or why there was whispers at something, or was it just rumors? Like like I said, we weren't, we weren't sure, and like everything was always public. All the wallet transactions, um, any issue we had, we we made constant announcements for it. People always told us to stop pinging the announcements. Like, I don't know. As far as I'm aware, everything should have been out in the open there. Okay, so there's nothing there. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now that we can kind of cross that, let's talk about the 65k thing. Um, we touched on it on the interview that the Omniverse interview on chain used the clip on his uh, on his channel. Yeah. Um, this is where it gets very interesting, Kevin. Uh, I, I don't have the legal or professional experience to like really give a detailed answer as to what's legal, what's not. Where, yeah. where are the lines drawn? You seem from the answers that you gave me um, and that you gave me before we talk right now via DM, you seem very confident that you guys 100% did nothing legal, that on-chain is out of bounds for saying the things that he's saying. Can you please yeah. give us some context, but not just like, here's yeah. it give me some details yeah maybe the conversations that you've had with lawyers that make you so sure about your position and well, then, we're sure on we, hold on and then after we establish that yeah. then maybe we can talk about the moral aspect of it should yeah. a team yeah. keep 65k even if it's legally theirs but first let's, let's talk about the legal yeah. aspect go ahead yeah i was kind of confused because in the call he was like at one point i think he was getting upset that i wasn't reacting a certain way and he was and he asked me are you a sociopath and i thought no, this is pretty self-explanatory. And I thought I explained it, but he jumped over it. But that token amount, you can see directly. So anyone in crypto, just follow the transaction. You'll see a certain amount of tokens sold. And then you can see where those tokens came from, which is the team allocation Unicrypt unlocking. That's literally where it came from. We didn't mint supply. And then to say that we pulled liquidity to me doesn't make sense because that would mean that we would have to directly interact with the liquidity pool and nothing else, right? We would just be taking money out. And I'm trying to explain, explain this as simple as possible for anyone watching too. Please, yes. Yeah, this is where we go into the smart contract because we have access to it, right? And and it's multi-sig, so it would it would require all of us actually, me, Joey, Sam, um, it would require all the multi-sig holders to go in approve a transaction to just take money out of the pool which is not true 
we had team token allocation vesting that unlocked. And as you can see, if you go on Unicrypt and you can see that the day it unlocked is the day we sold the tokens. And no, actually, that's not true. I think we waited like a day or so. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm having trouble understanding why people think we pulled liquidity when it was the team token allocation that we set up on Unicrypt the day of launch. Okay. So, yeah. follow-up question to that. Um, is Did you guys have... And I don't know, I don't, if there's NDAs that were signed, whatever, I, I get that, yeah. but if there wasn't, did you guys have a certain amount of money that you invested yourselves? And if so, how, what was that amount? Because I think, that yeah, was um, I think all of our wallet addresses are public. I, I lost around 3,000. Sam lost around 10,000. Like we can prove it too. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Joey lost, I, I can't remember, but I, I think Joey lost money too. And it, like we were pretty open about this on the team where we bought in right at launch, public launch. We didn't buy in at pre sale. So, Hold on. Yeah. Are you now telling me uh, investment that you made as far as the token? Because I was talking like pre-sale. You know how like when a project. Oh, oh we didn't. Yeah, we didn't buy into pre-sale. We we didn't buy into pre-sale. We bought it at public launch. Okay, I'm sorry. For, yeah. for, scratch that. Yeah. So let me rephrase my question. How much money did you guys invest into the into the protocol into the project before you know as far as your actual you know like say you start a business and you invest yeah. i don't know 100k how much did you guys invest of your own money not counting any kind of like you know pre-sale or anything like that so smart contract audit plus all the marketing we put in so i put in three thousand uh joey i think put in three thousand sam put in i think like four thousand and that was for the uh we use we the four thousand i think on his end was purely for the uh the nft tool which was to gather all the addresses I can't remember what it's called. It's like, uh, so you can buy it for one ETH. And at that time, ETH was around like $4,000. And okay. so, yeah, I, I put in my own money to pay for some of the content creators to make initial videos on us. Joey did too. And then the 4,000, majority of it came from Sam to buy the uh, the tool that collects wallet addresses and then puts it into... Um, so ballpark, like give me a number ballpark. Of 10,000 total. So like like me, Sam, and uh, Joey. Okay. 10,000. Yeah. Okay. So much less than, than 65, 50 K. Okay. So, yeah. so that money though was, is 100% legally yours. You can say that with hundred percent confidence yeah, because it's literally the token allocation that unlocked, meaning okay. if high point was still running to this day, that token allocation was unlocked, meaning it is the team's tokens that have been investing the entire time. Okay. And is, yeah. and again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming yeah. from a very basic point, but I think this is good because I probably know about as much as most, most investors, or maybe they know more than me about this, but Kevin, is this normal? Like to yeah. make 65 K off a project? Uh, um, I actually think it's significantly less considering a lot of teams allocate more than 20% of the, um, token allocation to themselves. Um, okay. So yeah, that airdrop, I, that airdrop that you had like 24 to 48 hours after the launch, remember? Oh, we didn't, yeah, we didn't even get that. That, that went to holders. That like, only went to holders. You yeah, guys didn't get that 30%, yeah, whatever so, it was. Yeah, the way the smart call, um, contract works is there's no mint receiver address. So if we tried to mint, it wouldn't go to one address. And then we would manually distribute it. It went to every holder's HPT address. And everyone just, like, like I said, like we had already lost a bunch of money. It didn't matter to us and we didn't sell. Because in the moment that we did it, we were on the call with Obsidian. There was literally no time to sell. Okay, so yeah, yeah. let's talk about that because Oliver made a point um, yeah. that I didn't understand when he brought up Obsidian. He said that they it seemed like they agreed with his perspective that the the sixty five k isn't yours. What what was yeah. that about? Did I misunderstand? Is Oliver incorrect? Like, yes, and I don't think he's incorrect. I just think he's not understanding. Everyone keeps thinking that we do, like. To pull liquidity means to directly interact with a smart contract and to just take it out. As you can see, we didn't take out all of it because one, we couldn't because we don't own the contract address anymore. We literally renounced it. And then two, the reason why we couldn't take all of it out is because of the token allocation amount. Don't you think it would have made more sense to mint exactly enough tokens to take out all the money remaining in the liquidity pool? Right. Wouldn't that make more sense? Because I believe that there's like 4,000 or 5,000 still sitting in there. Like just logically speaking, who would leave 4,000, 5,000 for no reason? Do you see what I mean? It's because when the team token allocations came out, that's how much it came out to 65,000. Interesting. Yeah. I hope that makes sense because if we really wanted to pull all the liquidity, we either one would have interacted with a smart contract entirely 
2.2, we would have just taken it. Uh, uh, we would have minted if it were possible, which is not. We would have minted an exact amount needed to pull out all the liquidity in the pool. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So yeah. So why would someone like Oliver, like an on-chain, why yeah. is he so confident that what you guys did is illegal? Because I wasn't able to explain it. And he thinks it's dirty blood money of investors. And I tried explaining, okay, the token crypt allocation unlocks. And I didn't even get to say this because I just sat there and he was just yelling. And I was, I was like, okay, there, there's, there's no point to this. But if the protocol was still running today, our token stood a will, would have still unlocked on that day. And we would have sold regardless. Do you see what I mean? I do. Yeah, even at the, because that token allocation was set out for the team right at the start. And there's a reason why Joey didn't um, let us have it right at the start, because he wanted the protocol to run for that long. He wanted the protocol to go for that long, that three months, but it didn't. So even if the protocol was still running, those tokens would have been sold out regardless because they were set aside for the team, as stated in the white paper. But, but you're still not explaining why the Obsidian Council made the decision that they made. Yeah, no, no. So that's, with that one, that's that's regarding the liquidity pool. The team token allocation amount is ours. It's it doesn't regard the liquidity pool. Oh, so that's what Oliver you think is focused on? So no, that's so the three points that they said you never touch the liquidity pool. We never touched it, right? Well, the tre the treasury, eventually you did on June thirtieth. Yeah, but but when you so I'm trying to explain that we never touched it. We never pulled out money. Those were the token allocations for the team that was owed. Okay yeah so if the protocol was still running to this day those tokens that we sold off would have still been sold off for the team okay and i think i think you were trying to explain that to oliver because you kept saying that it would have been yours anyways is that what you yeah, referred to? yeah because we literally set that aside right at the start of launch the day of launch we set that aside on unicrypt the team token allocation amount on on the day of launch you already had that much okay yeah, 20% was just set out. And um, the breakout was stated on a white paper set, set out for the liquidity pool, for the marketing wallet, and then for the um, the team token allocation amount, which we posted on our server as well, the Unicrypt blocking link. Okay, I mean, I don't I don't remember what I had for breakfast, Kev, so. I, well, that, well, that's I what I mean, that. right? Like we put it all public information, which is why like, like it's not like I'm a sociopath. I was just calm in the call because I thought he knew all this information and I'm sitting there like, is, that, is something I'm saying not making sense? It would be different if we had minted supply to empty the liquidity pool. But one, we can't. And two, mm -hmm. those tokens were literally created on the day of launch, set aside for the team on the day of launch. Well, I, yeah. I think he called you a sociopath because of the fact that you called your project a, a, a scam. Like, like, oh, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. if you sit there and say, yes, it was a scam, and no, uh, we're, we're doing the right thing now because the project that we're starting now is not a rebase protocol, so it's the right thing. But yes, we did a scam, and that's basically what you said. How, it's all context. It's all how the words came out. Because you said it the way you, it did, Yeah. then I guess that's why you called your social media. Again, I, I've watched maybe the first half of that. Uh, I'm still trying to catch up with all my, my DMs about this. But dude, like if you said that and, and you're saying you did, and I actually heard it. I heard you say it at least once. I mean, that's yeah. you got to be careful what you say. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I know. I know what you mean. When you text me, I was like, oh, fuck. OK, I understand now. But that's literally what I meant. Like, that's why we ended the protocol. When I found out that you actually need people to actively trade it and not hold it, even though we're telling people to hold it. I was like, OK, no, we have to end it. Like, that's literally why the protocol ended after three weeks. Because so, so early. OK. Yeah, mid like literally not even midway in, like a week before we realized that we're like, okay, how do we move towards? And there were a bunch of things, right? We were like, oh, we're going deflationary. Remember, we posted that. We were like, okay, you know, the rebasing has to start. Rebasing cannot work. We have to move towards a model that does work. But mm -hmm. we were told that we can't even do that because, you know, it's the same thing when Apple sells iPhones. What happens if Apple stops selling iPhones? Then you know, who's going to buy a phone? They're going to go to Samsung, they go to everyone else. So we were like, okay, can we, are we even allowed to end to stop rebasing? And yeah, so it all spiraled out and we realized, you know what, we're just going to end the protocol. Like, I think you're right. A hundred percent. You're right. I should have stated it in a different way when I, that's yeah. I, I didn't mean to sound like a sociopath. I was literally saying it was a scam because yeah, when I realized that it was a full on scam, I ended it. We ended it immediately. 
right? There were there were over three hundred fifty thousand in the treasury set aside mm-hmm. for the team, right? And I said this on on his um on his video, sorry, with his I sorry AMA or whatever it is, right? I said that on him. I said, yeah, um, it's stated in the white paper. When you buy into a tax token, there are certain things you forfeit, such as the tax part that is meant for the team, right? So the treasury, we say it on white paper. It is meant for staff payments and for project improvements. We, I, I fully, I fully wrote that. I remember talking about it. I've, I've said it in many AMAs, you know. Mm-hmm. So there was still over 350k in the treasury. There was like over 100k in the RFE. It's not like we weren't doing fine. You know what I mean? That would have been that. That would have meant those um, 350k just spread out for the team, and we 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 could have just let the project die and keep going. Right. Which yeah, we a lot of projects do that are doing that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I know. I know a lot. I'm not gonna say which ones. A lot of projects are doing that, but instead we use the treasury to buy back the supply, even though it was meant for the team. And that's not the first time that we did that. We use 100k in staff payments right at the start to fix a mistake that we did. We okay. didn't you have to use 100k you know what i mean like so it's not like we're actively keeping mind to ourselves we could have we could have been continually getting paid 350k until the protocol just completely dies out and mm-hmm. then when the team token allocations finally open we could have dumped that too but mm-hmm. instead when i when i when i fully realized oh shit, this is a fucking scam yeah i ended the protocol but i guess he is taking it out of context and being like these guys knew it was a scam from the start right Oh man, oh, uh, they they meant to hurt everyone. These are bad actors. I mean, and, you kinda, I, and again, I'm not trying to be mean, but I, I feel like you did that to yourself, man. Like, yeah. And that's why, you know, when I sent you the DM, I sent you, I was like, dude, what what the hell's going on? Like, what? Same. What, no, no, I know. I knew something was wrong when I checked your message. I was walking my dog and I checked your message. I go, okay, so this is something wrong when you messaged me. I was like, hey, if everyone else is messaging me, that's fine. If you're messaging me, there's something wrong immediately, you know? Yeah, I was kind of pissed. I mean, I'm like, what, yeah. what what's going on? Okay, so let's I, I think you've done your part to uh from your perspective state your legal pers- where you come from legal yeah. perspective all right i'm i'm just listening because I yeah don't i'm not a lawyer oh However, i just want to say if, go ahead you, sorry, if, if there's any person if there's anybody who like we've collaborated with and you want to cut ties entirely like i i completely understand you know there's no harm no foul just shoot me a message and be like hey uh i don't think it's good for like us to pair reputations so i just want to we put that out as a disclaimer for anybody. Okay, keep going. Sorry, go ahead. Cool. Okay. So now that we covered the legal aspect of it, let's cover maybe the moral aspect of it. Maybe the, yeah. I don't even know what the right word is, man. But I, and I think maybe this is one of the things that on chain me was feeling. I don't know. Um, I, yeah. I you know, <laughs> this on chain guy, I feel like he gets, and I, I, a lot of people are not going to like this. I feel like he gets a bit of a bad rap because he's trying to clean up DeFi. He's yeah. just maybe he's doing it in the worst way. I hate the fact that he was making fun of Eric's mom, the way he came at it, Brian Legend. Um, yeah. You know, the way he, I haven't seen the whole discussion. Even, with even Sam and Jesse. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it it's not the right way to try to make advancements, right? Coming at people yeah. so hard. Um, so I wish he didn't do it that way because he's, he's a very intelligent guy. And I think he's very funny, entertaining. And I do appreciate he's trying to clean up DeFi. Having said that, he made some points about whether or not it's moral or ethical, whatever. And so I'm, you know, I'm putting you in the hot seat, man. But, but Kev, I think, you know, I, I really appreciate you doing this, but I think this, this is an important discussion to have. If the protocol did very poorly, right. Which it did, you figured out pretty quickly that, that it was not going to work out. You closed yeah. it. The six getting 65 K for, I know, I know it's a big team, yeah. morally how does that sit with you or is that one of those things where you because that's why i asked you how much you invested if you would have told me dude we all invested like 100k that's one thing but now you're telling me you only invested 10k so from a moral perspective yeah. how do you feel about that like I, I don't know what the right answer is i don't know what standard for a protocol i'm starting to figure out the protocols make a lot more money than i thought yeah. they did what what is where, where does that come from is it did you guys come up with like a mathematical equation of like well, this makes sense because we put this many hours and it's 16 yeah. of us. Because I remember your team was huge. Like, can you tell me, you know, where, where that sits with you? It sits fine. Like, and I was trying to say this, but he wouldn't even let me talk. But we did seven months of building the community from zero members all the way to 17,000. You know, seven months. So that means seven months of inconvenience for the team. They're not getting paid for any of this. They were not getting paid for any of their efforts. Mm-hmm. I'm talking developer costs. This guy did this for free and expected to be paid after myself joey all the mods sam uh cam cam fulton cam as well okay 
So that's how many point. people? Are, how many people are we? Is this 14, 16? You had a big team. Uh, our full staff team was 24 because you need to factor in every single person that was uh, on the mod team that did seven months and then everyone on Cam's team and my team as well. So I had four people under me. I, uh, Cam had around four under him. And, you know, developer costs are way higher than um, uh, like marketing efforts are. So it was like, do I, and that's why I keep saying 65K is minuscule because those tokens were meant to be ours as we set aside 20% for ourselves mm -hmm. and seven months of inconvenience for every single person. So I thought, no, like this is a hundred percent, not even close to enough value. And even then that 65K, we can only, we don't even get to use for the team. We're using it to grow Omniverse. And so it was like, it was kind of those sucker moments where the team is kind of used to sacrificing money anyways. 100k we spent at the start in staff payments we use it to buy back the supply right at the start mm -hmm. right 350k right there even though we publicly said people forfeit it we use it to buy back the supply when when the protocol ended so that's 450,000 now and the last but not least 65,000 that was supposed to be for team token allocations that literally were unlocked on june 30th and then we sold we didn't get to use that so what is that total uh 515,000 team didn't get mm -hmm. And they're still with us. So that's why, like, when people ask us now, how big is your Omniverse team? Same people. They're doing this for free again until we launch, whenever that is. Mm -hmm. So in terms of morals, no, like, I don't think it's moral to make 20 other people do unpaid work for more than seven months now because they've been doing Omniverse work and high point work. And they only got paid for a three-week duration. Not even three weeks, two weeks. And then we just ended the protocol and used all the money. Okay. So yeah, that, that's where I stand. It's like, everyone's like, oh, and I go, okay, what about those set, those 20 people that didn't get paid for seven months and more? Okay, so I let me, I understand where you're coming from. I, yeah, yeah. The one big thing I would contest there is, um, I don't think it's right for you to say seven months because now you're mixing in Omniverse into HP. No, no, right? no, 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 no. High Point was purely seven months from building to launch. Was it really? Yeah, yeah. You can go back to our message log. It all the way from November to um, okay. That was that was just when we were just starting to build smart contracts off. It went way further. I, I yeah. guess I'm misremembering because I thought you guys launched. So you guys didn't launch in like February, March. You launched later. Yeah, we launched. Remember, we only lasted three weeks before we right. died. Right. Yeah. Do you remember what month you launched? Um, hold on, let me let me see if I can go back to. Because I, I believe the Twitter is still up. No, no, no. The server is still up. Let me see. I mean, I remember it got pushed back a few times, but okay. I mean, we'll take your word for it. If you say seven yeah. months, seven months. Um, I mean, okay. Um, yeah. I'm trying so to that, think what why, else. Yeah, I'm not even factoring in Omniverse yet, which is so far like okay. a month and a half, two months. I'm which you shouldn't, yes. which you shouldn't, because they're two different projects, yeah. right? But, but then again, the okay. But again, the 65K is was used for Omniverse, but like you're, you've already gone over this. I'm not going to make you repeat all that. So yeah. um, I, I see where you're coming from. I, I, I do. I wish we uh, had some kind of like lawyer with us here uh, that can kind of like decipher through everything because I think that would be really helpful. Uh, I guess that's my other question for you. Have you guys talked to a lawyer beforehand, afterhand to understand all this completely? Or is this your own research? Like, uh, how are you so sure about your position? So, um, yeah, yeah. So we have, so, as far, so he's told us that in terms of like, like it's a crypto lawyer. So it's like, we didn't really say anything for a crypto account. They told us whatever stated in the white paper is what is like by law. It's, it's a law in DeFi or crypto, whatever is stated in your white paper, which is why like technically anything that goes against your white paper is when your protocol is changing. And that's when people can start demanding refunds and whatnot. So anything stated, anything not stated in the white paper done or anything that is stated in the white paper is fully justifiable. And one of the things that we did was team token allocation vesting mm -hmm. that was set aside right at the start and it was included in the white paper. So that's why I keep telling people, okay, it's, it was also said that you you forfeit uh, um, a certain amount of your funds when you pay these taxes and you buy into the token, but we didn't get that either. So technically by law, we should have gotten that 350K. It's it, everybody thinks like they understand. They're like, oh, it's it's like like um, it's what you said. It's like oh, by law, this and this and this and that. I'm like, okay, so so you've actually consulted a real lawyer because we actually know anything written in white paper is by is is law in DeFi. So if you put that 
for example, taxes, you forfeit taxes towards and the marketing wallet or yeah, marketing wallet. I wrote this was all used for marketing uh, investments mm -hmm. and expenses, right? Which I did. Mm -hmm. I did. Treasury we put was for staff payments and protocol growth. Okay. We didn't get to use it for staff payments and we didn't get to use it for protocol growth. So if people want to talk like, hey, uh, you guys are doing this and this and this and that, whatever's written in a white paper is technically by like by law. It's so, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. That's, that's why I'm so sure on it. And then that's why I'm like, that's why I wanted to go in and I wanted to explain all this. Like I didn't go in to debate him and be like, ha ha, fuck you. Blah, blah. No, like I went, I didn't even go into slander. I just went in, tried to explain, didn't let me explain. I just sat there and I just got yelled at and I was like, okay. Like obviously the scam part, that's my fault for not explaining. But yeah, that, yes. like if anybody asks, yeah, why do you think we ended the protocol after three weeks when we had over $400,000 in the wallet money to ourselves? Does that, does that make sense, right? Seven months of work, you would have thought, oh, these guys are going to stretch this for a long time. No. The second I found out it was a scam, I told Joey, and we sat. And then a week later, protocol ended, didn't get any of the money. That's why I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm confused where this concept is coming from. No clue. No yeah. clue. But I, yeah. I'm the wrong guy to ask. Okay. Yeah. And that's All why right. I'm so open about it. You know, like I'm not mm -hmm. open because I'm a sociopath and I'm cocky. I'm open because it was literally written in a white paper and I can explain this verbatim. You ask me again tomorrow to explain all this. I can explain every single thing I said to you without even listening to this recording. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Interesting. What What do you think kept you from being able to give these type of responses versus what little bit I saw with Oliver? Because I, I was literally just getting yelled at and like, and I know like when you're talking to children, if somebody keeps yelling at you, you just don't say anything. You just sit there. You're like, okay, are you done? And and you heard me ask, if you listen to it, Rebecca, you heard me ask a few times, can I talk now? Are you done now? But he, but he wasn't. Every single time he said, yeah, he would just talk over me and I go, okay. So okay. it's like, I'm glad that he won to his like 50 viewers, but like. No, I man, he, he has viewer. He, he has yeah. a big following. I mean, people know well, who what he is would have been fair to like let me talk but i was like so yeah midway through you can see my face just dropped because i was like why did i hop on this this is like i'm literally just getting yelled at and everything that i want to say to you i can't even because i he literally just starts yelling or he just like redirects the whole conversation entirely i tried to say this right and i tried to segue into my points couldn't do that I, I think Oliver's a very smart guy i think he's very shrewd yeah. he comes in with a game plan he sticks to it he knows what he's doing yeah. Um, but again, I, I, I do appreciate the fact he's trying to clean up DeFi. We need it. Um, so Kev moving forward, um, we've done this now for 38 minutes. So yeah. I think we should wrap it up soon. Let me ask you this, man. Um, moving forward, what, what are you going to do? I mean, this is going to be something that's going to be, uh, pretty, uh, pretty rough for, for Omniverse as a whole, as a team. Um, you know, you, <laughs> I'm telling you a lot of things you said are going to be taken out of context and, um, it's going to be rough for you guys on the PR front. Um, what does this do for your launch for you guys moving forward? Um, where's your headspace at right now? Well, we knew this would happen when we knew this would be brought up. Like, like when you asked me about it, I explained this to you in like two sentences, right? Cause I thought you understood too, but then I guess to, to Oliver, I had to, I had to explain for over like an hour and it didn't go through. Right. So I'm I like, <sighs> It's not that I did or didn't understand. I just don't feel comfortable with it. And when I asked you guys about it in the interview, I didn't follow up with more questions. Mm -hmm. You guys gave me your answer. And I'm like, I just didn't feel comfortable pressing when I'm not an expert on the matter. Yeah. Um, and maybe I should have pressed more. Maybe I should have yeah. asked more. But I, And I'm being very transparent. I I, I like you guys. I think you guys are um, uh, nice guys. I, 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 you know, I talked to you guys when you were with High Point. So there is something there where I've known you guys for a few months. And, but I didn't press because I'm not an expert on it. And again, um, but it just because I didn't press Kev doesn't mean that I understood. I <laughs> okay. see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see that now, but like, yeah, like, yeah, me hopping on, it wasn't to like come at him to, you know, to like, Oh, sorry, beef. It was just like, Oh, I thought he also wanted to hear because initially he said, okay, you know, you're here to explain. And then I didn't even get to do any explaining. So I was like, okay, I just wasted like an hour of my, my time. Yeah. 
Well, hopefully I gave you a, a platform to say your piece. Um, yeah. And um, again, this is very one-sided. I see someone in the background there um, in boxer shorts. <laughs> um, all right, man, I think this would be a good time to wrap it up. Um, Kev, uh, thanks for the time. Anything else before we wrap up? Uh, I don't know. I'm unsure. Uh, aside from the one thing you said, you know, I value for your opinion very high. And you're like, yeah, you probably shouldn't have said, I, I probably should have put in more context, which for was, sure. I ended sure, the man. protocol because I found out it was an outright scam. Should have said that. Didn't say that. Hindsight, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it is, it, it, yeah. it really is. Well, Kev, thanks so much, man, for coming on um, and uh, kind of clearing things up a little bit more. I'm sure there'll be more um, and uh, we'll see what happens. And um, it's going to be an interesting few days. For sure. Thanks for having me, man. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.